next CTL's guest is Mr. Steve Lebo. Welcome aboard, sir. Hi, Mark. Glad to meet you. Uh, could you give me a brief history of your boating uh, history? Well, over the years, I've been in boating, Mark, around 42. Mm -hmm. And over that period of time, I've had eight boats, six of which were power, and two sailboats. I presently have a 30-foot hunter, which is a sailboat, and I come out of Pacific Corinthian Yacht Club here. Mm -hmm. um, we've we have had uh, occasion to sail, uh, work aboard uh, the Mississippi barges, uh, Ohio River. Uh, we've had uh, worked on tonnage boats out of uh, Lake Erie and Chesapeake Bay before coming to California and been involved in boating out here for the last uh, 19 years. So that's quite an extensive history. I understand you have a sea tale for us, a safety story, a sure true do. story with a safety message. I sure do. Did I get that out of you? <laughs> we'll give it a try. Okay. Mark, no matter how long you've been around boating, you find that uh, you, you, you can get into trouble. Uh, this ocean out here is really something not to toy with. Uh, no matter how much education you have, you still must always be cautious. Uh, and I guess I'm a little bit of a safety nut. We were on our way, we had been over in Alberts uh, at Santa Cruz Island, and it had been a beautiful uh, three days there, but we had to leave. And we came around the island, uh, long past Yellow Banks and into, into smugglers. And at that point in time, uh, we got hit by a, a downdraft off the mountain, if you will, and took a knockdown right off the, right off the coast. When we righted, we found for, we for were... For our new boating friends that are just new to boating, could you explain a knockdown for them? Well, a knockdown is when you're, you get a tremendous gust of wind, which will, can average 50, 60 knots, and it actually tips the sailboat completely over. Because of the pressure on the sails. On the sail, mm -hmm. and you actually go into the water, and you, you, your boat can actually fill with water. However, the boat I have now is a fairly safe boat, so it righted itself completely. So it just came right back right up? Right back mm -hmm. up, but of course we were drenched. Mm -hmm. um, after that happened, we were caught in this very strong wind. I managed to get a reef into the main and drop the jib, and we were off and running in eight to 10 foot seas in no time at all from a perfectly calm, flat area. Um, about. 40 minutes on that run, the jib halyard, uh, the, the, the halyard uh, parted, and I lost my main. Uh, meanwhile, I had gone below and dragged out the storm jib, and we were, I had to go forward on a deck that was bouncing seven feet in the air and seven feet down, and put that jib on there. And, Again, and, for our and, new people and friends in boating, a storm jib is just a small sail that goes up in the front of the boat that's in heavy correct. seas and stuff that'll hold up. That's correct. That. It's a small, it's a small jib. So uh, we were able to get that up, but the uh, the wind was blowing so hard, uh, we were running with it now, and it was showing up on the wind meter at 47 knots, blowing. Uh, that was at the low point, and it was gusting up over 50 knots. Uh, we were running, in fact, we made the run back here, and if I had missed the entrance coming in, we would have had to go on to Marina Del Rey. <laughs> <laughs> so, There'd be no way to turn around. And, what, what would normally yeah. be a four-hour run, we made in two and a half hours, mm -hmm. so you can see we were moving along pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, damage done to the boat was minor. Uh, the sails were extensive. The main sail I had to have redone, and since then have replaced uh, a couple of uh, four sails for the boat. But I think, I think the thing here is that you should always carry the proper sails with you. Be ready for these emergencies. And secondly, I think, too, that, that, that this ocean out here is, on a day like today, which is really beautiful, you know, it's nice, it's wonderful, it's a lot of fun. But nothing pays off like education and being able to know, you know, what to do in this kind of a situation. Because your life and other people's are in danger. And they depend on how, how much you know, how prepared you are, and if you indeed have the right equipment on board. That's correct, Mark. Now, I've been involved with the United States Power Squadrons for over 28 years, and I teach in those, co those courses. And I think anyone that is out on the water should at least alleviate themselves of either a good uh, USPS course or the Coast Guard Auxiliary has courses as well. 
And I think further, joining a, a club such as Pacific Corinthian Yacht Club is a help because we all boat together usually. We go out in a group, uh, we watch out for one another, and when somebody else gets in trouble, we try to help them out as well. So also on your races and what have you, you actually learn how to push your boat to the maximum. And oh, sometimes you push a little over and something breaks or goes wrong, but there are those people there and hopefully you've you know, done your homework sure. to where you're going to survive that. Better than if you're out there caught in bad seas and you have to do it on your own. That's correct. Mm -hmm. um, one other thing I might tell you about that happened to me one time, we were out and had rented a boat, believe it or not, out of Ventura. And the gentleman, we ran across right at the end of our sail, uh, a gentleman in a very large boat. It was a 45 foot, uh, a uh, 45 foot uh, Chris Craft commander approached us. I see we do have about one minute left, so. Okay. All right, well very quickly, he had run out of fuel. Now mm -hmm. imagine a 45 foot boat asking a small sailboat to tow him into, in, first of all, it, did you have gasoline? Well, you know, that would be just enough to start the engines. Mm -hmm. And secondly, would you please give us a tow type of thing? You should always go out and be prepared. Be prepared for those contingencies. Otherwise, you can get into a lot of trouble. I guess that's my main message. Also, I, I did hear from, a mer from an attorney that uh, once you attach a line to that man's boat, the little sailboat actually is liable for that. And uh, so you really want to be cautious on what you're doing and view the situation, what have you. Now, on that note, I'm going to have to say thank you, sir. And we'll be back with another Sea Tales right after this.